Welcome back. All right, so last night we had 16 games on in the National Hockey League, all 32 teams in action, and today we've got one. And the day before that, we had one. Now, if they want to do 16 game days, fine, but I will I will chime in with people on do it on a Saturday. But not only that, I think there's a way to do it where it's going to work for everybody. So last night, of course, there were complaints about Philadelphia's game not starting until 11 o'clock for them local time. Doesn't work. It is, people in the Philadelphia market aren't going to go, hey, I just watched my team lose in the NLCS. I'm going to stay up really late on a Tuesday and see if the Flyers win in Vegas. It's just not going to happen. So if you have Eastern East, like East versus East and West versus West on this day, I think that works better. If you have it later in the season, I think that works better. And again, have it on a Saturday. Get around the regional blackouts issue we saw last night and have it so that all of North America are in on this, not just Americans and it's true it's this, this ice surfing thing. Oh, we don't call it that now? All right, well, it was ice surfing. Anyways, uh, so you can start this at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. So you don't have to start later in the day like we did yesterday, right? You can start with, and again, I just put almost random teams on the board. There were some matchups. I thought we'd well, have to have Pittsburgh, Washington. You have to find a way to have Toronto, Montreal. It's a Saturday. you got to have Toronto, Montreal on a Saturday. And of course, there's building availability, yada, yada. All these things are valid. But if you are the National Hockey League and you're trying to plan around a day and you're trying to make it a thing, you're trying to say Frozen Frenzy is a thing, I think this can work. So you'd have two games starting every hour, right up until 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific. And that's the kicker too. By getting all of this done, your hockey is done by 10.30 p.m. Eastern. So if you're on the East Coast, you can watch all of this if you're off on a Saturday. Watch the whole day of action. You can watch all 16 games. And I I really think that can work. But for this to work, there are certain things that the NHL would have to do. You'd have to have a free promo from ESPN+, Plus, Sportsnet+, Plus, whatever it is. Have a promo baked in for that day. Like, okay, for that day, you can get in for free to ESPN+, Plus, Sportsnet+. Plus. You'd be able to sell more subscriptions. You would have more eyeballs on the product on a Saturday than you're going to get on a Tuesday because people have to go to work, right? And if you have it where it's East versus East and West versus West, there's going to be more interest there as well. You're going to have more interest, again, from Flyers fans if they're in Columbus than if they're in Las Vegas. That's just that's that's how that would work. So you could have the eight the eight games between the Eastern teams. So then for the guys who are in the broadcast booth <clears throat> back at the studio, they could be analyzing what does this do for the playoff chase. So let's say New Jersey's on the verge of clinching, but what's preventing them is the New York Islanders. So the Devils lose their game against Detroit. You can then have them saying, hey, you know, they had a chance to clinch. Now what are the Islanders going to do? And you can build that up, right? And you can build that up too for fans who might be newer to the game or fans who don't follow all the teams, that kind of thing. You could make it work where you're, you're basically promoting the product while you're on there. And again, it could be done in Canada and the U.S. You could have it set up on Sportsnet. Obviously, be a little more modified for a Canadian fan than for an American fan because we're born knowing what hockey is. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's I think, something that could work. Free promo for ESPN Plus or for Sportsnet Plus, whichever side of the border you're on. Um, no regional blackouts. It's on a Saturday. And just... You know, basically say this is this is our this is our league, this is our sport, and and you're going to get a lot more eyeballs on it. Now you could also have a contest. Now I'm not saying a gambling thing, but you could do a 16 game predict predictor. So you put the 16 games up, right, and say two weeks before the games, you could have hey fans, uh, want your say and who you think is going to win the games. Well, go ahead and use the brand new NHL predictor. Uh, for for the frozen frenzy that is to come. Who do you think is going to win these 16 games? And then whoever's closest uh, gets a, a cup final trip and tickets. And if there are multiple winners, then you can have some kind of a lottery-based thing, and I'm sure people would, would be fine with a lottery. That's fine. Uh, right? But anyways, you could have the winner get a, a trip and tickets to the Stanley Cup final. So you would attract a lot of interest, and then you'd attract predictions, and here's the thing, if people are predicting and they're like, hey, I've got uh, 12 out of 14, they might be more likely to watch those last two games and see if they go 14 out of 16 and if they might be flying to the Stanley Cup. Uh, there have been many contests where you can win a trip to see to see games, where you can you can win a trip to see a Stanley Cup game. And I, I think that would that would work. And that'd be great fun too. 
Uh, you could even have it where the winner is announced once the games are done. So you could have a whole post post frenzy where you go over all of the things that happened that day. So you could have the 16 games and then you could have a, a post frenzy show that's a half an hour block. One of the things that I thought hurt last night was that uh, they go right from the Vegas game to, hey, we're going to go to the sports desk. And it was NLCS and it was NBA right away. And I thought, you know, that, that kind of goes against what they've been doing here. This hype, hype, hype. And then immediately it's, hey, how about baseball and basketball when you get to the, the sports show? So have have some kind of a, a post-frenzy show for half an hour where you go through all this. Uh, and you can highlight rivalries by doing this too. And keep in mind that the NHL talks about expanding the game. We want to we want to expand you know expand the game and expand interest. Well, what better way to do that than than have teams that really hate each other up against each other, have star players against each other. We know we know have beef with one another that kind of thing, right? Uh, also, because again, if you're if you're looking at this from a winning over new fans to the game, have historical info. Have like when Toronto's playing Montreal. Talk about the the rivalry for Toronto Montreal. Talk about some of their great matchups back in the past, back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s and so on, and I guess 2021, Um, because they didn't meet in the playoffs for a very long time, right? But you could have that, and then you could also have like cursory rule explanations. We go through, all right, so this happened in the game. Let's talk about it. So one thing from last night was there's never a moment where there's no hockey. There's no, we, we're going to have puck drop, puck drop, puck drop, puck drop, which is fine, right? But I think that if you have two games, four games, six games, and then you're going to have consistently six games going on, that's a lot of hockey. They're not all going to go to, um, you know, in between periods. They're not all going to have their, 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 uh, their periods aren't all going to last the same amount of time. Obviously, if it's the Islanders, it's going to last 23 minutes. And for Columbus, it might be 28 minutes. So you're not going to have them all ending at the same time anyways. But when you do have those breaks, you could get into, okay, so in this game between Pittsburgh and Washington, there was a cross check behind the net. Well, why isn't that boarding? Or this call here, this call here was uh, was a slash. Why wasn't it a hook? And you could have Dave Jackson or whoever they bring in to say, all right, so let's go over the rules. Let's go over why this is called and why not that. Have a play where a guy has three different fouls on him and ask Dave Jackson. So there's three fouls there. Why didn't they call three different penalties? And have him go through that. And it, and it might seem obvious to us hockey fans that watched for a long time, but for somebody new, may not know that. So you could have that just sprinkled in throughout. Don't be condescending. I'm not saying be condescending and, and you know, spoon feed it to them. But just explain it to people. It's just, it's it's one of the, like, hockey's really not that complicated. Uh, but there's definitely gatekeeping that tries to make it seem like it's really, really complicated. Um, I, I would also encourage, I think this can work. What about viewing parties in all 32 markets? You could have an NHL-sponsored viewing party in all 32 markets. You could have, you can, you can, sure, yeah, we can go ahead and cross promote it with MGM, sure, yep, the MGM bet app, sure, because it's, we know bet MGM is going to be in on everything, anyways. So you could have 32 viewing parties, and then when there's a goal for Detroit, you can go to the viewing party at a bar in Detroit or wherever in Michigan, Ann Arbor, wherever, and show people reacting to each goal, you know, show fans and have, you know, talk to fans and how do you feel about this game? And I feel, and now don't do that live. Because people will say things when they've been drinking at a bar. But you see what I'm saying? Like, make it seem like it's this big community thing. It's this big deal, right? Um, and maybe some neutral sites too. So maybe you have a viewing party in Regina, Saskatchewan. Maybe you have one in Hamilton. Maybe you have one in Houston or Portland. You could have little viewing parties here and there. And again, it is about trying to show, hey, hockey's not just some niche sport. There are a lot of people who like hockey and come out to a viewing party. You know, maybe you're going to get people to come out to a viewing party at a bar that just like, yeah, I, I like going to a bar with people. And and it could work. You could convert new fans that way as well. And you could also, if this worked, like let's say that this model was adopted and it worked, you could do it with increasing regularity. You could have one Saturday a month where you go, all right, it's a frenzy Saturday. You guys know what that means. You're going to have access to all 32 teams, all 16 games today. And we're going to have fun. It's going to start at 1 o'clock Eastern. It's going to go to about 10.30 Eastern. That's a long time. That's a lot of hockey. That's it, It's not like it's not like I'm saying, no, It's you know we're going to shorten it or we're going to draw it out. No, you still get a lot of hockey out of this. But the hockey gets done early enough that if you want to take your kids to any of these games, you can. 
Uh, you don't have to worry about going to work the next day necessarily unless you work on a Sunday. But again, if you work the next day, it's not a big deal because the games aren't late, right? So like 8 p.m. Eastern, well, this is 4 o'clock in Edmonton and this is 5 o'clock in Vancouver. On a Saturday, that's yeah, doable. Uh, it, it, I mean, traffic on a Friday would make that difficult if we were trying this on a Friday, but Saturday, I think it can work. And considering we had 15 games last Saturday, I think it can happen. Now, I, I've always been a pro proponent of the idea that, you know, your your matchups with your rivals should be towards the end of the season, uh, which is why I think this works better, say, after the All-Star break. Or, you know, if again, if you wanted to have one a month, you can. You don't have to have just West versus West and East versus East, but I do think that having those games start earlier and having it where people can really follow along and, and know exactly what's going on, I, I, I just think that would work. But I'd be interested to know your thoughts. And again, if the NHL said, hey, can we use your idea? I'd be like, yep, go ahead. I Yep, absolutely go ahead. I don't think they would. I don't think they will. Um, but hey, you know, uh, they, they got 16 games scheduled. And the trick has always been that there are there are booking dates that obviously you can't get for every building. Buildings are usually used for for concerts and other sporting events. They can't just put in 41 hockey games a year and think, well, that'll make us a profit. So they need to use the building for other things, right? Uh, but still, I, I think they can do this. It requires some forethought, requires some some discussion on, on how to make it all work. But on a Saturday, I, I think it absolutely can. And I think it would be a lot of fun that way. But let me know your thoughts. How would how would you do it? If you were your commissioner right now and they say, all right, give us a frozen frenzy idea. What do you think would work? Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.